stuck in um, in Bendigo last night um, with Saints there from all over the place. Of course, he's come over from New Zealand for the convention that we had last weekend. And, uh, and now with his son and uh, daughter-in-law in, uh, in Bendigo and uh, got possibly stuck here. But uh, we benefited from that last night with his, uh, with his presentation. So praise the Lord. Good ways to, um, good ways to encourage ourselves and, uh, and keep strong in the Lord while we haven't got the, the, the face-to-face contact. So um, we're going to have some more of that today. We're going to sing some praises to the Lord. We're going to have a testimony or two. We're going to, uh, I've got an item, a leftover one from convention. And I've got a, I've got a few things I want to show you um, of uh, baptisms that have happened around the world during the week, uh, which is quite amazing. Um, so we'll show you that later on. And amongst all that, Ben's going to give a talk. We're going to have communion and operate the spiritual gifts. So um, uh, it'll be a a good time. So let's start off with uh, 345, when I hear the trumpet call. One, two, three, four. When I hear the trumpet call, when I see 10,000 angels, then we'll see the Lord returning, then we'll be like Him. I've got to get used to this again. Um, all right, so let's have the next one. Got your, got your singing voices on. Number 67. Bring a song. We have Okay, 285. In my cryo, Lord, I think. One, two, three. In my cryo, Lord.
Praise the Lord. Um, good to sing these words, isn't it? I was thinking that, um, I don't know about you, but uh, I find myself uh, listening to the ABC News in the morning and waiting what, uh, to hear what our, our leaders, our state and national and um, not so much global, but uh, leaders have got to say. And, um, and we might wait every morning for that and uh, with regards to lockdown and that sort of thing. But praise the Lord, we come here today and hopefully we, we make more of it during our weeks as well where we, where we uh, wait to see what the King of the Universe has got to say, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And um, hope you're all doing all right. You know, it's, um, uh, we face uh, different challenges in, in these times. Um, but praise the Lord. The, the answer is still the same. The word, God's word is the same yesterday, today and forever. All the people said. Um, I was actually on, on Wednesday night just uh, just sharing some scriptures. Um, we we're just I was just talking with a sister and reading um, in in Luke twenty one. I will just uh, read it here now. It talks about um, distress of nations and it talks about men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. It says and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. There's no COVID in heaven. Um, there's all, as we've already sung about a lot here today, there's, you know, all of the worries of this life aren't in heaven. So what do we do? Look up. That's the answer. Some people would have us to believe that we've got to find a solution to COVID. Um, but the answer is still the same. Jesus Christ is the, is the answer, the only answer to, to this life. That's enough for me. Let's have another chorus. 229. Fits in nicely. One, two, three, four. One fine morning when this life is over. Good. Well, we might have number 70, and then after that, um, Chris is going to give a testimony um, for us. Cool. Thanks, Chris. Have this chorus first. God bless. 
Thanks, Chris. Okay, everyone hear me? Yeah, good. Um, no, I can certainly praise the Lord. Um, I had the privilege of uh, growing up in Sunday school and uh, learning all about the things of the Lord, a bit like a Sunday school lesson uh, before the meeting today. Um, I can certainly praise the Lord that um, at the age of 10, um, I came to the understanding that um, it was important for me to have a personal relationship with God and uh, I decided to seek for the Holy Spirit and, um, yeah, receive the Holy Spirit with an evidence of speaking in other tongues, as it talks about in the New Testament there. And uh, a few days later, I was baptised in full immersion. Um, and, yeah, that was the start of my walk with the Lord. Uh, since then, um, he's got me through a lot in life, um, especially through uh, school. Um, I was used to be bullied at school for uh, my beliefs and and the Lord got me through that. Uh, later in life, I had um, some workplace accidents and um, the Lord um, got me through those as well. Um, I just know that through life, no matter what comes up against me, I can always call upon the Lord. Um, one of my favourite scriptures in Isaiah 26 um, talks about He'll keep us in perfect peace for those that uh, look to him and uh, and he's all for that uh, our strength. And no matter what comes up against us, I just know that the Lord is my strength. Um, he's my peace. Um, I can always look to him uh, no matter what the problem is, how big or small. And uh, the Lord is always just there to uh, provide um, some major healing testimonies in my life have been um, I had a crushed foot um, at work um and uh the lord really just got me through that it could have been a lot worse than uh, what it actually was um i've had uh health conditions where i was in hospital about six years ago with internal bleeding um we didn't know what it was but i just had the peace and comfort um even while in hospital there um just to call out to the lord and i wasn't actually scared at all um and even at the time, I just remember the doctors and the nurses just saying, well, what's your pain out of 10? And I'd be like, well, there is no pain. And um, they were actually quite amazed because considering what I was going through, I should have had a lot of pain um, and they couldn't understand why I wasn't. But it gave me the opportunity to tell them about um, my beliefs and uh, how I look to the Lord and just continual remind, uh, reminders in my life of just what the Lord is doing. Um, even for a marriage breakup, um, you know, the Lord got me through that. Um, even just when I've been out of work, the Lord has always provided. He's always got me a new job just around the corner. Um, yeah, I can just certainly praise the Lord because it doesn't matter what comes up against us. If we look to the Lord, um, he's got the answers. And Sometimes we think we have it in our mind that we would like things to go a certain way, but the Lord always does it his way. And I can tell you and testify from um, personal experience that the Lord's way is always better than what we think. And I'd just like to praise him for that. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Chris. Um, didn't know about your workplace accidents. Um, we... Um, could have quite a list of them in the Geelong Fellowship. <laughs> I'd just keep that on the on the down low, but praise the Lord that he looks after us. Um, I'm going to, uh, hang on, I'm just going to change my view here. Um, I'm going to share an item with you now, not me personally. Um, did you, you all enjoyed the uh, convention last weekend? Um, I don't know whether you've had a chance to uh, look at any uh, sessions that you missed or, or whatever, or, or the Sunday night one, whether you got to tune into it. I think it was on the Sunday night, actually, uh, was the Pacific Islands. And um, there was a, a great little group uh, in Fiji that were just uh, singing there. And I've got, I've got another item from them that wasn't played. So I'm going to try to share the screen now and um, if, see if we can make this work.
My screen disappeared when I screen shared that and I thought I wasn't going to come back. All righty. Um, hope you enjoyed that. Um, I did. And I've, I've got some more things to uh, share with you. We'll do that later on, um, maybe at the end of the meeting, um, just to, um, maybe the, uh, the start of a new fellowship um, uh, that's happened during this week um, after, after convention. So... Um, we'll save that for later. Let's have another chorus or two. So we have another one on the list. Thanks, Anthony. Number 402, give ear to my words. I just saw that we've got on that list, Be Thou My Vision. Do we have the words for that? Otherwise, it might be a bit tricky. Uh, what's the chorus number? 586. Beautiful. Should we sing that one? That's a good one.
after this, we'll um, uh, if you've got any prayer requests, just put them in the WhatsApp as well, and we'll uh, we'll put them to the Lord after this. Um, so so chuck that in now while we while we're singing. And I'll ask uh, John Lawrence if he can to uh, open the meeting um, after this hymn. Great words. Um, the last two lines, which I was going to read, but they're gone, so now I have to remember them, um, were part of my own heart, whatever befall. What a great line. Still be my vision, O ruler of all. So praise the Lord. Um, we're a privileged people, and we're going to um, privilege people to know the Lord, and we're going to um, just have a word of prayer. Now we've got a prayer uh, for Cheng's friend, Jean needs healing for her neck pain, please. Uh, Chris, uh, prayer for a, for a healing. Uh, Rachel, uh, prayer for Julia and her, her family. Um, you can see all of them anyway on WhatsApp and the Lord knows all of them anyway. But um, we're going to have some prayer for, for those people now and just ask the Lord's blessing as we uh, open his word here today. Thanks, John. Yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, praise your Hallelujah. name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Yes, Heavenly Father, we uh, we rejoice that you are our vision, Lord. You're the, you're the one that guides us in all things. And we know, Lord, whatever is happening in the world, we can stay focused on you, Lord, because you're the only true God and uh, you'll get through us, us through every situation that comes before us. And we know, Lord, that uh, uh, being a spiritual people, Lord, and uh, uh, rejoicing on that we can uh, put any petition to you, Lord, and particularly uh, at this time, uh, for whatever the situation in people's lives that we've just heard, Lord, we know that you can well overcome and and, and continue to, to allow them to rejoice in your name. And if there's any new people uh, here watching, Lord, we just uh, pray that they uh, get a touch from you, Lord, that they may come to an understanding as we have of your great power and purpose. And we pray, of course, a, a blessing on, on our meeting today, Lord. Uh, let us be uh, enlivened, enriched, and encouraged, Lord, by your word. Uh, the spiritual gifts, Lord, when you talk to your people, 
We just pray, Lord, a wonderful blessing on our day in Jesus' name. Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. All the people said? Amen. Amen. Um, all right, you all got your, got your Bibles there. And uh, I see, welcome, Ryan. Um, tuned in from, uh, from Darwin. 30, uh, 32 degrees up there today. Um, all right. Um, so I think Ben's, Ben's just getting organised there. I open the word and, of course, uh, have our time of communion afterwards and opportunity to be used in the spiritual gifts as well. So lots of blessings. Am I on camera? Yes, you are. You guys hear me okay? Definitely can't see you. Yep. All right. Let me just change the view here so I'm looking at more people than just... Uh... Um, Anthony, have you pinned Pastor Scott as presenter? No, no. You're the active speaker. Okay. I've got to work out why my screen is showing just you now who's talking and not me. Doesn't matter. All righty. Let me just uh, change a few things. All good. All righty. So I'm going to be looking around all over the place. So try to ignore that. Open your Bibles, guys. Really good to see. Just a bit of an update of where the McDonald's are. Um, as you've probably heard in the news that Barwon Heads Primary School was a, um, a COVID site. Is it a red site, babe, or a exposure site? That's what it's called. And so uh, particularly um, uh, the grade four or five students um, had a tier one exposure. So we need to um, quarantine for 14 days. So we can't even, even at like Tuesday, if the lockdown finishes, still can't go to the shops and get chocolate or nothing. Can't even go down to the beach for a surf or nothing. So um, we've got how many days left, babe? 12 days to go. And then Charlie has to have a test and she better not come back with a positive. <laughs> <laughs> or she's out, no, no. Um, so that's where we are at the moment. Um, so, uh, Best writing a to-do list of what we can do around the house. Um, I think a lot of that's going to be cleaning and sorting, but that's okay. That's what we do. Um, title of the talk. So um, onto the talk. Title of the talk today, Anthony, if you want to write this down, is Noah and Jesus. Um, and uh, I'm just going to sort of just mash those two sort of thoughts together. And if we can, uh, let's turn to Genesis uh, chapter 6 with me. Um, we don't really hear um, much about Noah before um, verse 32 in chapter 5. Um, we don't really hear much more about him. We just know that he's got a good, uh, good family tree, if you, if you want to say that way. He, you know, his um, great-grandfather was Enoch. His grandfather was Methuselah, the oldest man recorded to um, ever live, 900. And, uh, sorry, was it 900? I've got it written down here. 969 years, I think he was alive. Um, and also his father was Lamech, and they were very righteous men walking um, and sort of understood what it meant um, to have uh, God um, as their king and as uh, sort of a focus in their life. But um, we're going to jump down. Oh, the first mention we hear of Noah was um, verse 30 of chapter 5. I'll just read it. Um, and Lamech lived... Um, after he begat Noah 590 and five years and begat sons and daughters. And verse 31, it says, all the days of Lamech were 770 and seven years, and he died. And then verse 32, Noah pops up, and Noah was 500 years old, and Noah begat Shem, Shem Ham, and Japheth. And um, for any of those who have ever come out of Adelaide are pretty familiar with um, Don't Knock Noah, the play. Um, it's probably been going on for like 30-something years now. Um, I think Linda, did, were you in that, Linda? I think, you were, I think Linda was, she was um, one of the sinners or something like that. It was a youngies play that sort of all the youngies were involved with and stuff and it's been going on for ages. But this is where I sort of want to pick the story up. In chapter 6 and in verse 5, and God saw that uh, saw the wickedness of men was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart. 
And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I've created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowl of the air, for it repenteth me that I've made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And, um, and I suppose Noah um, was just continuing on, I suppose, with the things um, that uh, he did, um, uh, that, or his father did and his grandfather did and things like that, and understood it was a good and, and healthy way of living. Um, oh, there we go, it changed. Um, and so um, uh, we'll keep reading in verse nine. And these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in all his, all his generations. And Noah walked with God or Noah walked in the way of God. Or you could even say that Noah continued in God's ways righteously. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham and Japheth. And the earth was, uh, oh, sorry, the earth also was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. And uh, we'll keep reading. And God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted his ways upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the, with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room sh shalt thou make in the ark and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shall make it uh, of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits. The breadth of it will be 50 cubits and the height of it 30 cubits. And so um, it says here that, that Noah, uh, sorry, God said unto Noah. Uh, so he had an intimate relationship with God. God communed and, and, and had a discussion with him and he gave him a job to do. It was to build an ark. And to get some sort of concept of how big 300 cubits is, a cubit is um, generally about 18 inches, but because we don't talk in inches, if you hold up your forearm, everyone hold up their forearm. Come on, Pastor Scott, there it is. It's from here to here. Yeah, it's from there to there. And it does vary a little bit. So I'm kind of assuming, you know, if you've got really long arms, it's slightly longer than um, Ryan's forearm or something like that. You know, he's withered one anyway. Um, but uh, he gave him a job and to put it into meters, um, 300 cubits is 137.16 meters. 50 cubits wide is 22.8 something meters and 30 cubits high is 13.7 meters. So it's um, a bit more than a, just a two story house in the backyard or um, a, a kinder gym or a cubby house that you're building for your children. It's a monumental task that God asked Noah to perform. And he started un unfolding what God, what his plan was to Noah about saving these animals and things like that too. And there's some sort of narration about, you know, how long it would have taken him and, and things like that. But as, as we read this passage here, um, we read that, you know, Noah was introduced to us at 500 years old. And then if we bounce over chapter 7, uh, verse 1, and the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee, have, for, for thee have I seen righteous before me this generation. Of a clean beast thou shalt take of these sevens by male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female. Of fowls also by the air sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of the earth. Of the earth. It's probably just to keep the, you know, the the DNA ticking over so you don't have much sort of abnormalities coming through with, um, with crossbreeding and things like that too as well. For yet seven days will I cause it to rain upon the earth, 40 days and 40 nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And verse 5, And Noah did according unto all the Lord had commanded him. And Noah was 600 years old when the flood of waters was upon the earth. So this time frame between us being introduced to Noah and him actually being on the ark is about 100 years. And here he goes about whether it's 50, whether it's 75. Some people, um, there are some narrations that say it could have been 120 years, thinking about the, the how big it would have been and hand tools and all these other things. That aside, he just was building this monumental thing that people would have been talking about. People would have seen this this sort of colossus emerge out of Noah's backyard above this, the 2.8 fences heights and stuff like this. Um, there would have been a, a, a building permit um, nailed at the beginning of the, 
entry, you know, driveway, you know, to let no people, let everyone else know that there's um, some, some sort of construction is going on. And if you have um, obligations, and if you have um, uh, cause to sort of, um, you know, argue against this against the council, or whatever. Um, Anthony, is my audio coming all right? Or do I need to change something? All good? Okay, no worries. Just feeding back too much. Am I yelling? I've told my family. I, I always get told by my family I yell, but I feel like I have to because the camera is so far away. Anyway, um, so this arc that Noel was was built uh, was colossal, was massive, you know, 100 metres, 130 metres long or thereabouts. Um, something that you just can't sort of idly walk past and not realise what something's going on. And even ask the question, hey, mate, what are you building there? Um, and the sad thing is, is that for that time, we read that when, when Noah commanded, um, sorry, when God commanded Noah to get on the ark because it was going to rain, it was only him and his wife and his sons and his wife and all the animals that were actually saved in that ark. It talks about in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, it makes a reference to Noah and it says, and spared not the old world, but save Noah, the eighth person, um, a preacher of righteousness, bringing the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And it talks about Noah being a preacher of righteousness. He wouldn't have just kept to himself. There would have been discussions in the marketplace. Oh, Noah, here's your delivery of gopher wood again. You know, you need another quarter ton or whatever, so many cubic metres sorry, cubic cubics, um, next week. Yep, thanks, Ralph, another so much of cubic cubic metres of gopher wood, thanks. You know, how are we doing on the on the gopher wood forest? Still plenty of wood? Yep, sure, great, good. You couldn't escape those conversations. And, and oh, by the way, why are you building this ark? Well, God said he's going to destroy the earth. Noah would have put out a warning. Noah would have said to um, his community, the ones that he was able to, listen, this is going to happen. Save yourselves. Um, we know that, um, you know, the play Don't Knock Noah, there is a plea to get inside the ark. And yet, sadly, that he was mocked and scoffed in the play. And I can imagine even today when we preach the gospel that we are sometimes laughed or dismissed. I'm not ready for that. Um, I serve my own gods or whatever like that. However, it didn't, didn't stop the fact that God was going to destroy the world um, by water. Um, and when I say the world, we sort of have an understanding that it was a localised area and the world being um, in the region about where Noel was situated. Um, and so with that, Noah prepared a sanctuary. God commanded Noah to build a place where people could go to be safe and escape the, the sort of the destruction that God was going to pour out upon the earth. And I want to now jump to relating that to how Jesus Christ came on the earth. And we didn't hear, we don't hear much. If you can, please um, turn to Matthew chapter three. Um, you know, we, we hear um, the Old Testament prophesies of a coming of a king. Um, Isaiah talks about, Isaiah chapter seven talks about, um, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. His name shall be called Emmanuel. God with us or God amongst us. What am I doing? Turning to Matthew chapter seven. Oh, sorry, Matthew chapter three, sorry. Yep. Um, uh, you know, we read of his virgin birth and how the wise men from the east, it's a, a belief that um, their descendants from Daniel or, or training or instruction from Daniel, how he was kept, uh, led captive away with, by the Medes and Persian Babylonians or kingdom, kingdoms and empires or whatever else. Um, that uh, even, um, you know, the Romans at the time were fearful of Jesus being born at that time, thought that was, he was going to usurp the, the throne, the natural throne. But it wasn't the case. Um, uh, when we sort of don't really hear much of Jesus after he was sort of grown up and brought into the temple and sort of dedicated before the Lord and things like that. And then we jump to when he was 12. And, you know, he was separated or he chose to stay behind, I suppose, and he stayed in the temple. And when his parents realised the day after down the track, um, his parents, you know, found him in the temple sitting and listening to the doctors. And it talks about not just doctors in, yep, you know, you have a blood condition and this is something wrong with your eye. Not a medical doctor, but a doctors of the law or lawyers, so to speak. And they would, he was listening and having 
deep and thoughtful conversation with these guys and they were um, astonished at his, at his wisdom or his understanding. And um, his parents, um, you know, he's actually told, he said, what, what are you doing? Uh, sorry, uh, Mary and Joseph um, asked him, so what are you doing? Why, why'd you stay behind? And in verse 15 in chapter three, um, it said that, um, that, oh, sorry, I've lost my quote, but it, his, his mother questioned him and said, I have to be about my father's business. This is what I'm about. And then there's a pause in Jesus's life. And 18 years, 18 years, again, we don't really hear much. There is a reference how it talks about, and Jesus grew in wisdom um, and things like that at the end of that passage about him being 12 and left in the temple. But we don't really hear of anything of his, of his work or his deeds or anything like that. And I think it's for a purpose. However, 18 years later, he comes out to this man called John the Baptist, who's proclaiming and preparing the way for the Messiah, for, the, for, for himself, for Jesus Christ. We're going to pick it up in Matthew 3, verse 13. And it says, Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan, unto John to be baptised of him. Uh, but John forbade, it, forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptised of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it be now, sorry, so now, for thus it becometh us to fill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And, and Jesus, when he was baptised, went straight up out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven uh, saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Um, so at the age of 30, Jesus comes out as a man. And he actually says to John the Baptist, for us to fulfill all righteousness or for it to be right or for everything I do after this to be right in the eyes of God. Um, it has to happen. For me to start my the, the laying their foundations for me to start to prepare a place to, to sort of finish the Old Testament and usher in a new way, I have to be made righteous as a man, as this flesh and, flesh and bone. Um, and so here, Jesus Christ starts. And just if you turn over chapter 4, and in verse 17, you know, we understand that after John the Baptist baptised Jesus Christ, he went away and he went into the wilderness and um, was praying and he was tempted by Satan and he sort of used scriptures to defend his cause and to sort of rid Satan of any power that he might be trying to show on top of Jesus Christ. And he comes out from the, from the wilderness refreshed. And in verse 17, it says, From that time Jesus began to preach and say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Just like Noah was preparing a, an, an ark or a sanctuary, and for those between 100 years, he wouldn't have kept his, he kept his silence and not warned people about the flood and about the dis destruction that was coming. And the same with Jesus Christ. Now that he's been given, um, made things right in the sight of God, he was being made righteous through the um, waters of baptism. He started his um, commission, so to speak. He started the task that God asked him to do. And, you know, we can sort of argue for reasons and talk about why maybe he didn't do it when he was 18 or why he didn't do it when he was 21. Um, however, God and Jesus had a plan, and this is the outlaying of the plan, and we can read of it. Um, can you jump to... Um, oh, got a few more points. Um, now, we read about Jesus' life, and, and from chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7, he goes up onto a mount. And if you've got one of those Bibles that highlights words of Jesus Christ in red, you turn over and go through those chapters, and there's a lot of red. I think the only black between chapter 5 and chapter 8 is about two verses and the heading of the chapter that you're going into for the next chapter. There's not a lot of um, breaking for other people to ask questions. Jesus starts just changing things. We don't know chapter five of the Sermon on the Mount. And he goes right through to chapter eight. And he talks about this new way of thinking, not the law anymore, but starts to usher in this sort of new sort of understanding of things. And, and how do we become into that? Jesus Christ is starting to build a work or start to prepare a place or, or is ex, um, constructing a sanctuary. How do we, benefit from this how do we avail ourselves of this how do we 
um, make use of these studies provided for us. Um, let's turn to John chapter three. We understand that, you know, the, the ark, if it was never ever used, you know, I had this thought that if, a, if the ark was built and it never flooded, it would, have been, it would never have been a place of escape or it never would have been a sanctuary or a safe, a, a, a safe place. A place is only safe if it's used for safety. A sanctuary is only used to go in and escape from something that's happening outside. And so um, it has to be used. That's what I'm trying to get, get to. Um, what did I say? John three, too busy chat, chatting, not turning into scripture, sorry. So John chapter three, and we're familiar with some of these scriptures, but we're just going to lay a bit of a lay a bit of a story down here. Um, John chapter three, verse one, and Nicodemus. Oh, sorry, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi or Master, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Um, verse 4, Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not, that I say unto thee, you must be born again. And then verse 8, it talks about the wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but, can, can't, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. And so Nicodemus, being a natural man, couldn't quite understand this spiritual concept that Jesus was getting to, but he understood that this is the way. If you want to come into this safe place, come into this sanctuary, if you want to see the kingdom of God, you must be born again. It's the only way. And again, it's not, you know, um, born of a mother, but it's a spiritual birth. And how do we do that? Um, how do we uh, usher in? Let's quick jump over to John chapter 17 with me, please. I said, please. John chapter 17, verse 1, and says, These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father. Now, just to give you a little bit of context of this, um, this is when Jesus has pulled himself away and he's praying. And he's sort of really sort of pouring out his heart. He knows that his end or his, his job time is short upon this earth. He's just about to be sort of delivered up and crucified. And so this is his sort of last main discussion um, uh, before he goes into that whole you know, the passion of the cross, if you want to put it in, put it in a title or anything like that. But let's start in verse one again. Sorry. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should uh, give eternal life to as many as thou have, have given him. And this, sorry, and this is life eternal that thou might know, it, know thee and um, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And at this point, he's saying to his father, to God, I've done. The ark is finished. This place, this finishing of the old law and this ushering of new, I've set it up. It's ready to go. It's not much to do now. And so he's asking for strength and he goes on. It's a really good uh, passage if you want to read it. But um, by the grace, you know, we understand that Jesus Christ from this point was crucified and he was, was whipped and things like that. And we understand that, um, you know, he was hanging on the cross and he paid the price of our sin, hanging on the cross. And when he died and when he was put in the tomb at that stage, the price was paid for our iniquity or our, our separation from God. However, it wasn't complete. You know, I remember a pastor in Newcastle gave a really good talk and he said, at this time, when Jesus was dead, lying in the tomb, 
Satan was victorious at that point. Hell had won. Hell had Jesus captive in the grave, dead, finished. The men of the time, the Pharisees and things, understood that, you know, Jesus Christ, no, we can put his, cross his name off the board. He's done now. We finished that one. Oh, we can get back to doing what we were doing before. No problems. But by God's power and by God's grace, Jesus Christ was brought out of hell's grip and he was resurrected and he was changed. We understand he appeared to Mary in the garden and said, don't touch me. I haven't ascended to my father, but I'll come back. Tell the others, quick, go. And so he, from physical, he became spiritual. And he um, had finally finished. He'd conquered death. He conquered hell. And he'd done up and they sort of sealed it, made a way possible that we could do the same. Um, let's go to um, Acts chapter 1. And he sort of appeared to his disciples who were with him for, for 40 days. And, and this is sort of like his finishing sort of little sort of pep talk or instructions before leaving earth, you know. Um, and so being the final things, the most sort of poignant, I suppose. Um, it's, it's interesting. I was sort of reading a few passages and um, he appeared unto his disciples when they were in a shut room, a couple of chapters um, at the end of John here. And, and this, I just found this interesting. and I'll just read it out. Um, um, so that he appeared and he said, peace be unto you. This is Jesus. And when they had said so, he showed them his hands and, and his side where his disciples glad and they saw the Lord. And Jesus said unto him, peace be unto you. As my father has sent me, even so I send you. And in verse 22, is, and when he had said this, he's, he breathed on them and said unto them, receive ye the Holy Ghost. I've never seen that scripture before. But even before, you know, we go into the book of Acts, Jesus appearing unto his disciples and preparing him and saying, you need to do this. There's something that's been sent. Uh, we read in um, John 14 that he is the way, the truth, and the life. Um, and when the comforter, he's going to send another comforter, it goes on in chapter 14. And the Holy Ghost, when it abides within, in that day, we shall know that, that Jesus is in the Father and, and we're in Jesus and Jesus is in us cool that's a tongue twister and this is what it sort of this is what it all hangs on on that day when the comforter the, um, the holy spirit abides within us this is what he's commanding his disciples his followers to do and we're going to pick it up in verse 14 uh, sorry chapter 1 and verse 1 uh, sorry 4 get it right acts chapter 1 verse 4 and being assembled together with him commanded them that's jesus jesus commanded them the rest that are with him that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. Past tense, I've told you this about it. I've told you before. We read it in John just about receive ye the Holy Spirit. John 14, I'm going to send a comforter, the Holy Ghost. Verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. If you read the book of Noah, sorry, Genesis, about Noah, the story there, God actually tells Noah it's going to rain in seven days. It gives him a time frame. Get started. Start collecting the animals. It's going to rain in seven days. Get ready. Here, Jesus Christ is giving um, his disciples that same warning about being filled with the Holy Spirit, be becoming phys from physical to spiritual. He says, not many days hence. Get ready. Verse 6, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Boys, boys, boys. You can imagine, you know, um, you know, if it was a footy team and these guys are going, oh, yeah, no, we're all good and it's only half time. No, no. The, the world will look after itself. This is different. Verse 7, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times of the seasons which the Father has put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. So don't worry about that. The world will look after itself. You've heard me that destruction is going to come upon the earth, but you will receive power, the Holy Ghost, the comforter, the thing that I told you about before. That's going to happen. And we read in Acts 2 about the pouring out of the Holy Spirit and how it actually comes, how you can actually know that you're actually filled with the Holy Spirit. 
And, you know, later on in Acts 2 and verse 38, everyone was pricked. Of, What's going on here? This is amazing. And Peter basically said that you need to repent, be baptized, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit like we have. This is what's going to happen. And it's a promise. It's going to happen. And so that is the way we understand that when Jesus talks about in first John 14, that he is the way, the truth and the life. You can't go. And we heard in Nicodemus with Nicodemus that you can't enter the kingdom of God unless you're born of the spirit. Then we have to do it. Jesus's way, his way, his, he is the truth. And if you want life and life of eternal, it's through Jesus Christ. Let's jump to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And so now that, you know, we've had an amazing experience, you know, we're filled with the Holy Spirit. We speak in tongues. We understand that's the evidence. You know, you can hear the wind, um, what it rustles. You can hear the Holy Spirit. And we've been baptized by full immersion. A death, a death, a burial, bearing our old way of life and natural being. Well, what then for us? And sometimes we can sort of get caught up and we can sort of drag ourselves back into that natural thinking and thinking, oh, well, where with this banner or where with this, these guys, these are the good guys or, um, you know, oh, we'll just read. This is very interesting. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, um, the Corinthian church, Paul's writing here and he's warning them that don't get hung up about different parties. I'm with this party and I'm with that party and, and I'm with the Labour Party because they're these guys and I'm with the Liberals because these guys or anything like this. These guys were sort of getting caught up. Who brought you along? Paul? Oh, no, Apollos brought me along. So therefore, I'm the Apollos crew and you're the Paul crew. Yeah, crew up, whatever. No, it shouldn't be like that. Sorry, guys. Um, chapter 3. And verse 14, for one, for while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Uh, who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man. I have planted, that's Paul, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that gives the increase. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we uh, are laborers together with God. You are God's husbandry. You are God's building. And so we need to understand that, you know, at one time in our life, we heard and we hearkened unto our, the calling, the repentance. We were baptized by full immersion as Jesus Christ example. And we were filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And, you know, we've got to be careful that, um, I'll just keep reading. Um, verse 10, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. thereon there upon. Uh, the, for other foundations can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it. What days are talking about? When Jesus Christ returns. Because it, it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. And so if we've avowed ourselves of that sanctuary, if we've become and entered into that sanctuary where we've now been reborn, born of fire, been filled with the Holy Spirit, we need to understand that it's not by a sort of title or anything like that, but the work we declare upon Jesus Christ, we can't be sort of blazing out there and going, oh, I'm going to do this over here and start heaping upon ourselves our own sort of praise and, and, and glory. We're, we're nothing. Even Paul says, you know, neither is he that planteth anything, neither is he that watereth. It's God. It's God in us. And we all understand that we're worth nothing without the Holy Spirit in our life. Without God coming and dwelling within as we read about the comfort of the Holy Spirit, about um, having this sort of common union or this, but this bind spiritually to God, changing us from within, we're nothing. And then jump down. And in verse 16, it says, Know you not that uh, you are the temple of God and that, you, that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple uh, ye are. Now, it doesn't, it's, that's not a question. 
it's not saying you're going to be a temple of, of glory or a temple of um, defilement. It's actually that temple is in italics. So you can almost read, for if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which you are. You're the holy temple of God. God's come and dwelt within you. And if we build our life and our spiritual walk upon Jesus Christ, we are righteous and we will not be destroyed. We will not defile. And we will have made our way into that sanctuary, that place of protection, that sort of we would have availed of everything that Jesus Christ prepared up to the point where we were baptised and spirit-filled, that we would have accepted that and, and, and walked into it and we've made a way of escape. Um, jump back to me, if you jump back in Matthew chapter 7, if you can. And it says, you know, well, what then? You know, oh, there's so many churches around and everyone says they're spirit-filled and things like that. And you can sort of get caught up and some people do it slightly different and you can almost dis dismiss it away where there's different administrations, but the same spirit. And, oh, these guys are saying this and these guys are saying that. And, and um, you know, if you ever come into any doubt, understand that, that you're spirit-filled. Understand that you know, God through prayer can reveal things to you via the scriptures where you can compare and you can rightly um, discern the scriptures and understand and see where you are standing at the time. And, and this is what our communion meeting is about. When we take communion, we um, really reflect on our week and who we are and what type of person we would like to be. And, 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 and we press towards the mark as we read scriptures about that. But in Matthew chapter seven, details a really good way of sort of um, drawing a line in the sand and understanding what side you're on. Uh, Matthew 7 already said, verse 13, it says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few are there that find it. And if I put this in a sort of a natural sort of um, application is that, you know, generally, I, I, I do a little bit of hiking and backpacking. Generally, the best places are hard to get to because they're narrow and uncomfortable and things like that. And, and, and generally, the places where really wide paths and there's no steps, safe in, yeah. no steps, um, you know, are generally all right, but they're well-traveled and they're a bit thrashed and they're not as good. And so if you want to have something that's good, it's going to be straight. It's going to be narrow. It's going to be hard to hard to, to walk on it. Verse uh, 15, it says, Beware of false prophets which come up to you in sheep's clothing, and inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Uh, every tree that bringeth not fruit, sorry, forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire, where for by their fruits you shall know them. And you wonder, well, am I an apple tree? Or am I a lemon tree? Like, what are these fruits that Jesus is talking about here? Like, is it what I do in life? So if I, you know, give to world aid or, you know, give blankets out to people who are homeless. Does that make me bearers of good? Well, straight away, I think of Galatians chapter five, where the fruits of the spirit, Jesus is talking about spiritual here, the spiritual application. If your brother or sister or somebody, um, you know, it might be a, a, a you're, you're maybe tossing up, where should you go? What fellowship should you follow or, or bind yourself to? Think about, what God wants to see in, in his people. Does he want to see love? Does he want to see joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, meekness, temperance? Does he want to see those things in his saints? Or does he want to see them sort of, you know, 
putting badges on themselves or stickers on themselves because they donated a couple of bucks to as many people down the street they can to or something like that. And so you've got to ask a question and, that, and this is a, a spiritual application and that's what we pray for. That one, for my walk in the Lord, that I show these fruits that, I'm, that uh, these are evident in my life and I reflect on these and I think, well, hang on a minute. I haven't had, I'm not very peaceful at the moment. Things are getting sort of ripped up by the world at the moment. I'm going to pray for peace. Or, you know, you might see a brother or sister, you know, oh, wow, they always seem really calm, really, really even tempered. Oh, pray the Lord's blessing them. Praise the Lord. Good. You know them by their fruits. And so let's keep reading. Uh, verse 21, it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say unto to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Therefore, whoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I liken him liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended and the floods come and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that he, uh, heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods come and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell and the great was the fall of it. And, and so... We understand that Jesus Christ is our foundation, where we manifest our works upon that. We build it with silver, gold, hay, wood, stone, where we build and we are made a sanctuary. Upon that rock, you know, the floods come, the rain descends, the wind blows. But what we set up upon Jesus Christ will not be destroyed by the earth or by the world, I should say. And that um, we can avail ourselves of that. Jesus has given it to us freely. And also we can go out and, and offer it to ones about who want to hear, not as the mighty word of Ben or the mighty word of, you know, the word of Taj has come unto you in this place and you need to do this. No, we're nothing. We come with Jesus Christ's example and God's word. And upon that, mighty things can happen. So I love the, fact that the the last part here. It says, verse 29, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. He really ripped into the scribes and Pharisees and told them that they were hypocrites and, and vipers and snakes and stuff like that who were just so far removed from what God's will was. They had fallen into following the world and, and thinking the world's wisdom is good. The world's money is good. The world's kingdom is good. No. Jesus Christ has set up a sanctuary for us. Let's avail ourselves of that. Let's examine ourselves daily and think about these fruits of the Spirit. Are we, exempt, are we showing these in our life? And if not, we have the ability to pray in the Holy Spirit where we can then be sort of edified by the Spirit and these fruits will then come out and then we'll be, as one of these good trees, we'll bring forth good fruit. That's all I've got. Thanks, guys. All the people said, amen. Thanks, Pastor Scott. Amen. Thanks, Ben. We're going to have a time of communion now. Um, I don't know if everyone's got their uh, their bread and bread and their cup. Um, I was a bit out of practice, and uh, my wife's not here today. She normally, if I'm writing a talk or running a meeting, she very nicely brings me my bread and my cup, so I had to race off for that before. Um, so maybe you can do that while we sing a hymn. Uh, make sure you've got that ready. Um, Anthony, I, I believe we've got a hymn or two that aren't on that list. I don't know. <laughs> Otherwise, we can have um, Blessed Assurance, um, 64 on that list with an H. So we'll sing this one just as we, we've already been uh, encouraged here and, um, and and thinking upon Jesus today. But it's, of course, that's what we do at a time like this and um, to, to really take the time just to, to think about the price that was paid and the, 
the wonderful um, sacrifice and uh, love shown to us. So we're going to sing this hymn. Thanks, Anthony. I want to share a couple of quick thoughts with you before I um, ask, um, who shall we ask? I might ask Brad if he can um, give give thanks for the bread and um, Daryl if he could give thanks for the, the cup. Um, uh, I just uh, enjoyed um, a, a scripture there today that, yeah, a really simple one that I've read many times. You know what it's like sometimes? It's sort of like uh, Laurie Salami. And, um, you uh, you know, one time it's just got just the right level of chilli or, you know, the fennel undertones coming through in it. And um, you, you, there might be a bit more depth, depth of flavour or whatever. And you get that with a scripture. And you might have seen this before, but I just wonder if the times that we're, we're living in now um, just when Ben read it today, where it says in Acts chapter one, it's not, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons. And we talk a bit about that, like that no man knows the hour of the day. It's, it's, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons, but you shall receive power. 
and I just just today when I heard it, I thought, you know, like there's another real encouragement, you know, um, that the the power that we've received because of what Jesus Christ has done. At, at a time like this, we don't know the we don't know the hour, we don't know the seasons. It not it's not for us to know, but you shall receive power. You know what I mean? And and um. It's just uh, really encouraging, and and so as we look to, as we look to Jesus Christ now, you know, just one other quick example. I um, just find it interesting about um, you know border lockdowns and that sort of thing. And um, Macy actually had a birthday just the other night, and uh, so um, Amanda took the kids to the to uh, to Adelaide, and. Um, uh, I said, you know, you might never see me again. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, anyway, um, so you fill out your, your border permits and, uh, you know, there's stories associated with that. But you approach the border with caution. You know, it's there on the Thursday. It's going to close at midnight. And um, But you've done all the right thing. You've done your border permits. And I was just thinking as, as Ben was talking today um, about Noah and about Jesus and and about a border or a bridge, you know, a bridge to a new life. You think about Noah and, and the, the ark that was a bridge to a new life and, and Jesus and being born again. And, I mean, maybe ultimately that bridge is when he bursts through the clouds and we rule and reign with him. Um, but the border pass is is being born again and you know and, and maybe we still approach that with caution of course we know that from the scriptures we we know and understand that with confidence that your border past is signed by the blood of the lamb it's signed by, by jesus christ and there is no problems with this border pass you're going straight on through but we still approach with caution and you know as we get told at the time of communion we examine ourselves and uh, um, the Lord's coming back, ready. I've got my border pass, signed by the blood of the Lamb, and I'm ready to, I'm ready to walk on in, you know. And and so to live each day, you know, I got have I got that all right, ready to go. Is this gonna is is this gonna clear me, clear me at the border? And so we've had some good encouragement along those lines here today. Um, let's. Let's just be really thankful now for, for Jesus Christ and the, the new life that he's given us and the, the, the wonderful eternal life that we look forward to because of him. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks, Brad. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, we just uh, thank you, Father God, for Jesus Christ, that uh, he made himself um, a little, made himself a man, a little lower than the angels and uh, lived a life on this earth. Uh, a sinless, perfect life. Then he offered up his body to be broken for us that by those stripes that we are now healed, that we now can take advantage of that We, uh, as we eat this uh, uh, parcel of bread to, in remembrance of what he's done, that we realise we are no longer bound by sickness, uh, by sufferings, by disease, that Jesus Christ has paid that price and now we can live a totally victorious life. And we thank you. In in uh, Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's eat now in remembrance of the Lord's broken body. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Thanks, Daryl. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that uh, as we've heard today, a great purpose, a great plan, uh, going back even uh, looking at Noah, Lord, and uh, looking at uh, all the things that uh, are in your word, Lord, that uh, declare a purpose, declare a plan for mankind. Lord, and then we come into uh, the time when you gave your son, you, you, he was born of a, a woman, and he, he led a life, Lord, and... Uh, we hear how he uh, was out preaching your word, Lord, and uh, then uh, he was crucified that we might be part of your plan, 
that we might be part of your purpose. Lord, to be uh, washed by the blood that he shed on Calvary, to be set free from uh, the limitations of this life, to be brought into covenant relationship with you. Lord, we just thank you this day, Lord, that uh, through the precious blood of Jesus, we've been made, made righteous in your sight. Lord, prepared, Lord, to meet uh, you in the air, Lord, when you come back. Lord, we just can't thank you enough, Father, for what you've uh, given to us through your Son. And we can't thank you enough, Jesus, for what you've done for us. We just pray, Lord, that we are ever mindful of the great privilege we, uh, we live being part of your family. Bless us now in your mighty, wonderful name. Hallelujah. Praise Praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's drink now in remembrance of the Lord's spirit blood. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. All the people said, Amen. Um, nearly choked on my juice there. Um, all right. We're going to um, operate the spiritual gifts. Um, so um, we uh, we look forward to this, and um, uh, we didn't uh, didn't get a, a chance to uh, be used in the spiritual gifts last week because we were listening to the convention. So here's your opportunity today. So uh, as as we do, just uh, just un unmute your mic in advance in anticipation of being used of the Lord, and um, then we'll we'll look away just. But just as you do, just be nice and quiet um, so we don't get too much background noise. I, uh, I, I've told the story a couple of times uh, last year of how someone was, the, the new level that the Lord went to with the, the gifts because um, someone was operating a gift in the meeting, um, in, in our Zoom meeting, uh, about not turning back. And meanwhile, uh, someone had a, truck reversing down their driveway going beep 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 <laughs> um anyway we're going to uh, look forward to what the lord's got uh, in store for us today so um let's let's look away to the lord now hallelujah praise you lord god hallelujah 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 praise you jesus hallelujah 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 praise you lord god hallelujah 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 praise you lord hallelujah hallelujah Samapaha, Samapaha Natara, Samapare Kona Tina Marakima, Parasuma, Parahute, Bapare Uta Marakara, Samapara Tama Rebera Tim, Bratima, Parasuma, Paradito, Marikato, Marabao, Ayukono Tero Bora Sombra, Dimoro Bar, Sombra Bas, Nino Seraha. Be not fearful, my children, because I, have, I am holding you in the palm of my hand, saith the Lord. I have picked you up out of the miry clay, and I've, uh, I've washed you and I've cleansed you through the blood of my son. And through that, uh, you have no, no need for fear. I've given you uh, joy, I've given you peace, and I've given you comfort, saith the Lord. So do not fear about the confusion and the... Uh, the, the chaos that is happening around you, because remember, my children, I am holding you in the palm of my hand and nothing can come upon you, saith the Lord. When you think about your natural body, says the Lord, and uh, in, uh, in weakness or in sickness, that uh, you seek to find a, a remedy, something to, uh, to make you feel better, and... Uh, on occasions, there might be multiple remedies 
that will uh, will start to to heal you or to to make you feel well again, says the Lord your God. And I I say to you to know that uh, in your in your weakness, in your in your suffering, uh, says the Lord, in your trial, in your in your temptation, uh, in your battles, that uh, I have uh, the answer for you, and uh, it can come in all forms of remedies as as you look to me, says the Lord. That uh, in your prayer, that uh, as you, you you fix your eyes on me, that I will give you an answer that I will give you uh, insight into, uh, into my, my word, into, into the, uh, the answers in your life, says the Lord. You may find it in, in, in singing and praising me, says the Lord. As, you're, uh, as your heart is, is, is open and you, you commit yourself to my ways and you, you read my word and you'll open your Bible and you'll find a remedy to your problem. You'll find something to lift you up, says the Lord your God. In speaking to a brother or a, or a sister who uh, is 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 part of uh, part of this family, says says the Lord your God, and and uh, an answer will be revealed to you. I say to you, I I will bring you uh, encouragement and I will uplift you in many ways, says the Lord your God, as you commit your ways to me and. Uh, and your heart is open to me, says the Lord, that these things will surprise you and they will come from anywhere. But it's my promise to you as my children that I will keep you, says the Lord your God. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 Let's look for a gift of, gift of prophecy now. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yea, says the Lord, haven't I sent you out? Yea, uh, into this world, yea, to preach my gospel, to bring the, the good tidings, the good news. Yea, and as I sent the 70 out, yea, in my time, uh, I gave them power. Yea, over uh, all authority, says the Lord. I sent them out to uh, uh, be able to be uh, used to perform signs and wonders in my name. Yea, I have done this in uh, uh, this day and age. Yea, I have called and have chosen and I've equipped. Yea, and I've filled with power and authority those to go out into this world. Yea, to spread the gospel. Yea, the, to uh, preach the good news. Yea, that would cause yea, others to be saved others to be part of my kingdom. Yea, I've given this authority to those, yea, that have called, yea, and sought me, yea, and have looked to me, yea, as the author and the finisher of their faith. Yea, so go out and uh, be part of this uh, fellowship and be part of this uh, kingdom uh, job that I've called you to, yea, and perform, yea, in my name, yea, speak in my name, yea, cast out uh, the... Uh, the enemy in my name, says the Lord, yea, and surely I will bless. I will put uh, uh, your hand, yea, into the pr presence of my power, yea, and you will go forth in great glory, says the Lord. Praise the Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stories have been rewritten, saith the Lord. And I have uh, placed your names in the book of life. And uh, in the, this life that you have, that you walk with, uh, with me, saith the Lord, uh, it's no more uh, that you can't do this and you can't do that. And uh, you haven't got the abilities. But now through the infilling of the, uh, the Holy Ghost, uh, you have now all the abilities. You have the, uh, the necessary uh, tools and, and things to apply in this life to get you through to the next life, saith the Lord. So just remember you are now new creations in me, saith the Lord. The power of uh, the Holy Ghost is now dwelling inside. Uh, so no more are you uh, overtakers, but overcomers through me, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
My children, I'd have you uh, to draw strength from these, says your God. Uh, yeah, you know, just to know that uh, I know all things, uh, that uh, there's nothing hidden, uh, but rather I can, uh, I can see all things and uh, uh, in your life uh, that uh, you go through and uh, uh, even though you might not uh, know what is around the corner, just know that I know these things, that, uh, that I will bless you, uh, that I will look after you, that uh, you don't have to worry about things, but rather just to trust in me, to trust in my word, uh, yeah, to be encouraged of me, to pray in my spirit, and uh, uh, just to, to have that time with me, uh, says your God, uh, because this is where your strength's at. Uh, you know, you know, when you look into my word and, uh, and you, you feel that joy that I give you, uh, it's through my spirit, it's through my love uh, that I do these things and, uh, and you can abound in me, you can grow in me. So I'd have you uh, just to be at peace within yourself uh, through these times to know that it is uh, a part of my plan and purpose uh, uh, for my, my things and for your life, uh, says your God. So uh, rest in me, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, 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 praise the Lord God, hallelujah, hallelujah, praise the Jesus. All the people said, amen. Um, all right, we're going to have a time of prayer now. So um, we'll just all um, be mindful of the, uh, the prayer requests um, that, uh, that we've had here um, today. And, um, yeah, just, just that the Lord would keep um, providing opportunities for us to, to be of, of service to him. It's what we don't want to forget about at a time like this. Um, so, so let's let's just we you know we we're, we're not going to hear each other now, but we know we're united in the spirit, and um, and so let's just uh, have have five or so minutes of prayer. Hallelujah! Praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah! 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 Praise you, Jesus.
said. Um, can we have number 219, Anthony, within the veil? Um, we'll, uh, we'll sing a chorus. Um, you can, um, maybe Ollie, if you can collect up the communion glasses. There's not many houses that need collection, but the Maccas, you know, can still do it with a communion glass collection. Um, <laughs> thanks, Ollie. Um, so uh, we'll sing this chorus. Like I said, I want to show you a couple of, couple of photos, a um, couple of announcements, and, and uh, maybe some breakout groups. Let's sing this one now. One, two, three. to Mickey as well. Nice to see you. Um, we uh, bumped into, oh, that's disconcerting when my face pops up on the whole screen. Um, we um, uh, had the pleasure of uh, bumping into the Gianna Carissas in Cairns. Um, no joke, bumped into a well, sort of thing. So um, that was um, good fun. Um, yeah, so um, let me show you. I'm going to, hopefully you're going to find this very exciting and interesting. Where's it gone? Now, let me just share this screen. Desktop two. All right, share. How are we going? You see, uh, see a bit of Google Maps there? I just wanted to give you a bit of uh, bit of uh, perspective. I'm going to show you in a minute some photos from the Dominican Republic. You see that there in the in the Caribbean. Um, so you've got North America coming down, South America there. Now at convention we saw places like Suriname, where there's revival, and Curacao and Aruba. Um, now, these have been going for a little while, and um, we see good revivals there amongst um, starting with families. Um, I think in each of those cases, in each of these four cases that I'm going to show you, that has come from the Netherlands. So here where we have, um, oh, I don't know the latest numbers, but maybe 400 people in the Netherlands in, in three different centres, in our, our Mira and Dordrecht and Rotterdam. That means nothing to... Most people probably, but um, as in you don't know those places. Um, but the Dutch, the history history has it that they were explorers, and so there's a lot of Dutch speaking uh, places here over here as they sailed the seas. And uh, Holland is very multicultural, and so you know through marriage. Uh, 
well, not through marriage, but people have come to the Lord there and, and they've got family back, back here. Um, so I just wanted to give you that perspective. And, and the cool thing is, so we haven't had a revival in the Dominican public, but, Republic, but just this week there's been baptisms there, which has once again come from family members of someone in our fellowship in Holland. And they're also Spanish speaking. So I believe they've tuned in or they're tuning into a meeting today with Pastor Pedro, John and Joy know, Peter. Uh, is he in San Pedro, John? Or is he in Fresno? But that's over here. So you've got Holland over here, Dominican Republic, and now they're tuning into a Spanish meeting today somewhere in the US. Okay, so let me... Bear with me just for two more seconds. Oh, why has this gone small? Uh, no, I need to stop share then on that one. And we'll go back to WhatsApp and share. Might be a bit slow, but I'm getting there. Um, all right, so this is, this is one of the baptisms. So this is Brother Avert from, from Holland um, and his... Uh, I, th I believe his wife, it's his wife's family that is in the Dominican Republic. Now, there's also a little video here. Yeah. Say hello, everybody. This is uh, Ariani from the uh, Dominican Republic. He has received the Holy Spirit just five minutes ago. Uh, of course, she spoke in tongues and she wants to be baptized really uh, uh, badly because she knows that it's the right thing to do. And we're going to ask her two questions. Uh, Ali, I mean, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes, I believe. Do you believe that He died, that He was buried, and He rose again to give you a brand new life? Yes. Okay. The confession of your faith, I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Exciting stuff. So um, the, just for interest's sake, uh, there's a meeting in Fortaleza in Brazil while we're in that part of the world. They had three baptisms during the week as well. Um, yeah. Oh, that's that one again. So um, I, I, just, I just was rejoicing because here we are sort of, of uh, you know, locked down and... and um, the gospel to our neighbor or a work colleague or, or whoever that um, you can sort of feel a bit flat but here the gospel's just still going out in the world in a COVID world you know that like we got no COVID compared to the rest of the world um, sort of thing and um, but the gospel's going out and um, I think that's really maybe just one of a finishing thought here today is I think that's really where we uh, need to focus our minds, I suppose, because we've got. Um, if you if you mix politics and religion, um, which you don't want to do, but because because everything's very polit political at the moment, um, we can sort of think about uh, we've got an opportunity to get rid of COVID in Australia. Um, COVID might never be gone in the world. I can't see how it will be. Now, I'm not the person to be talking on that. But what the Bible tells us is that in the last days, Jesus says to look for his coming. And, and how will we know? One of them is there'll be pestilences. We're living in the last days. And, and the Bible actually says, unless those days be shortened, that no flesh should be saved. So where I say don't, uh, about not mixing politics and religion, we're not, yeah, sure, if you want to get a COVID shot, um, uh, yeah, sure, we'll do the best thing we can to keep, keep COVID out of wherever we are. And, and we all would love to have some more of this wonderful life the Lord has given us as, as we have known it and to be free. But the Bible sort of indicates that the times are going to get worse before Jesus comes back and that you're going to have to hang on. And so our prayer really 
like, as it always has been, is not about saving the world in, the, in that sense from, from health and from, uh, from uh, you know, praying that Kim Jong-un doesn't start a third world war or, or that something doesn't blow up in the South China Seas. You know, we had a, a, a spy ship in Queensland waters just during the week. That's not our prayer. Our prayer is that as people are in fear in this life, that, Lord, give us the opportunity to tell them about the new life. More than ever is that people need the Lord. You know, that day is, is soon. It's just knocking on the door, you know, and, and, and that the, the crisis, the crises, in this world will lead people to the Lord. That's our prayer. All the people said? Amen. All right, well, let's, um, let's have a bright chorus. And then I do have just the announcements just to, uh, just to finish. Um, so, okay, Hosanna. We'll go with that. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name with hearts full of praise. We exalt it, O Lord, my God. Hosanna in the Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name with hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord my God. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name with hearts full of praise. Be exalted, O Lord. Okay, um, so just for announcements, um, we'll have a um, Zoom meeting on, on Wednesday again. Um, and then we just had the kids camp, which I got told I was one of the ones who hasn't registered, so I'll get on to that. Um, I, I just wanted to say that our um, kids camps generally in our fellowship have been from uh, nine years old to 12 years old. So um, there's a great opportunity here, this Victorian kids camp we're doing that they're doing from all, all of primary school age and uh, any older kids can, can come and help as well and be a part of it. Um, adults can come and be a part of it. I suppose our encouragement would be that um, if your kids particularly are younger than that sort of nine years old, um, it would be good if you could come and be a part of it um, uh, and uh, sort of find a way to, um, to be there for the, for the weekend um, and, and just to, to know what your, your kids are getting involved in and, and all of that sort of stuff. Um, so, so that would be good. Do you know, Anthony, were they still looking particularly for helpers or they're, they're pretty, pretty right? I think we're pretty sorted. Um, they were just wanting to wrap up a couple more and then that was it. But yeah. but if anyone is wanting to uh, to jump in, um, I'm um, sure they'll be more than welcome. Um, so just, just one other quick thing I just wanted to say is um, 
uh, it's great to see everybody here again. And I just really rejoice. I've probably said this a couple of times, but I really rejoice that through the difficulties of uh, last year and Zoom and and uh, all the different things that people face, that um, people are just wanting to be part of the meetings, whether it's on Zoom, whether it's at the hall. And, you know, I only felt like a couple of months ago, we really got into the swing of having some combined Wednesday night house meetings again, which, um, which uh, have always just been a real um, treasure in our fellowship. When Macy was over here, she said, oh, I forgot what a Geelong Wednesday house meeting was like. So that was really nice. Um, uh, so, um, but at the moment we're, we're back where we are. So um, I just thought it's just an opportunity um, just to tidy up our, our Zooming. Um, you know, some, for some of us find it harder than others. Uh, I practiced with Anthony for an hour before the meeting today to try to do my little five minutes of screen sharing. And it all worked perfectly. And then today, the main screen of you guys and me has gone missing multiple times and I go searching for it and think, what's going on here? So some people find it harder than others, but it does take a little bit of working at, um, I've found, is you've got to have a plan. Um, at, you know, during last year, at one stage, we had the family on different devices and then it was lying in front of the fire and I thought oh, no, I don't really want the kids doing that so we all brought it into one room and um, had a meeting together and that had its benefits and now I've decided to bring it back into the office here because I realized we were um, we were probably getting a bit lazy where we were where we were sitting um, so all I'm saying is um, just have a think about it you know what you can do to to be a blessing to the meeting, just as we always are when we you, you, we think about when we're face to face. I was thinking about it, you know, with some of the presentations at convention. There was a little bit of effort, a little bit more effort that had gone into it this year. I mean, you see the Fiji singers. Somebody has put that together. You know, when they do all the screens and the the music, somebody's just wanted to add something to the meeting, and um, they might not be a person who you know, whatever, does other stuff. But um, there's little things that you, you, we can sort of think in Zoom, you know, maybe maybe we, there's not much we can give. But I think there is just by just by showing your happy face and and um, and singing choruses and and maybe, hey, maybe you do want to pre-record an item um, or, uh, or, you know, something that, that can be a blessing to other people or, or a chorus. You must be sick of hearing me on those choruses, I'll tell you. Um, some of the other singers are nice on there, but um, uh, yeah. So anyway, that was just a, a thing to think about. We sort of, Anthony was working on today, the speaker view and that sort of thing, um, so that that uh, is a bit better viewing and all of that sort of stuff. So um, just think about what you can do in your house, may, maybe to make the the because it's all a learning experience. You realise when you first go to stand up to um, operate the spiritual gifts that people don't want to see your legs or whatever, and you sort of think, oh, we'll have to readdress how we do this here but um yeah anyway cool amen all right should we have one chorus to finish on and then i'm going to get um someone up in darwin to close in prayer for us um maybe if you guys want to have an arm wrestle see see who you are closed in prayer <laughs> Oh, this is fun. I'm going to let them sort it out, okay? We can just watch them um, battle it out. Who's going to uh, close in prayer? All right. Who's got a favourite chorus to finish on? I don't know if we had any left on the list there, Anthony. Four. Come on, let us go. Good one. All right. So, Pastor Scott, we've got a just a prayer request as well coming late for Giselle. She's got a high temperature. Just got to keep that in mind as well. Yeah, okay. Got that, guys. Um, Giselle's sick. All right, we'll have this chorus. Come and let us go. One, two, three, four. Come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord.
right. But, uh, just that reminder, that prayer request for Giselle. Thanks, guys. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 And Father, mighty God, uh, we are truly uh, honoured and blessed people that uh, you've called us to be sons and daughters of the living God, Father. We rejoice, Father, that once again we can commune with you, Father, all over the world, Father, our brothers and sisters in Christ, Father, mighty God. Father, communing and be reminded of our son, your son Jesus and what he did upon that cross for us, Father. Let's never forget that wonderful sacrifice, Father, mighty God, and be reminded of, Father, the wonderful loves and love and mercy uh, you bestowed upon us, Father. Mighty God, for our sister, Father, mighty God, uh, Giselle, Father, that you be upon her, Father, mighty God, that uh, you uh, you'll raise, raise her up, Father, that you'll set her free, mighty God. Father, continue to bless us, have your protection upon us, mighty God, and we know, Father, the mighty God, you're always there for us, that you remind us daily of who we are, Father, the children of the living God. So bless us, Father, as we go our separate ways in your son's wonderful name. We give you all the glory and honour in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All the people said, Amen. Good to see you guys. We got a uh, chance for breakout rooms, Anthony. Yep. All right. Thanks.